Okay, welcome to the video where we're going to be looking at a difficult problem using 3D trigonometry. So the question on the screen is the one we're going to have a look at. So if you want to pause the video and have a go, feel free to do so. But otherwise, I'm just going to show you how you can go about finding more of these videos on this topic from right within the video. Okay, so when you're on one of these videos, if you click into the description and you scroll down in the description, you'll see right at the top there, you've got a video with the five hardest topics on paper three. If you scroll down a little bit further, you can download my checklists and practice booklets for this exam. Just below that, you'll have the whole series, obviously at the moment, this is the first one coming out, so it's not quite filled in yet, but you'll have the whole series of questions that I'm going to be uploading in the lead up to the exam. Just below that, you have the series of exam revision videos. Obviously, we're focusing on paper three now, so we're going to be looking at those paper three videos for foundation or higher. You can also find those in the playlists. So that's how we go about using this video, and right at the bottom, you'll see that for some of them, I'll put some timestamps in, but down the bottom there, you have topics featured in this video. So I'll link all the appropriate videos for this topic, or for whichever topic we're looking at, right inside the video. So hopefully that's useful and helpful, we've got a lot to get through, so let's get started. Okay, so looking at this question, it says the diagram shows a triangular prism and it gives us some information about the prism which we can see on the diagram. It says M is the point on DA and DA is that length along the front of the prism such that D to M, M to A is 2 to 3. Now M has not been placed on that, so we're going to want to put that on straight away if we can and that is going to be just here, slightly closer to D than it is to A. So if that's in the ratio two to three, let's actually figure out that length. So this is a total of five. So we're gonna to wanna to do 15 divided by five, sharing in a ratio, which is gonna be three, and then times in two by three would be six, and three by three would be nine. So that would be six centimeters there and nine centimeters there. It says calculate the size of the angle between EM and the base of the prism. So this is point M. So to find the angle, we're going to want to draw a triangle inside there. So we have from M to E, we have that line. We then have the height from E to B, and then we'd also want to connect M to B, because that now forms a right angled triangle on the inside of the prism. So looking at that right angled triangle, we are trying to find the angle between E to M and the base, which is just there. Now to do that, we'd want to do the inverse of syncosal tan. So in order to get one of those, or figure out which one we're going to need, we're going to need to find two of the lengths in that triangle. So there are two lengths which stand out to me as ones we could find. We could have a look at finding this length along the base, because on the base there we have a right angled triangle, which I'll draw out in just a moment, and we've got the length of 9 and 5, so we'll be able to use Pythagoras. The other length which stands out to me is going to be the height, E to B. We have a right angled triangle here on the side of the prism and we can use Sokotoa to work out that length. So they're the ones that stand out to me. You could actually find the length M to E as well, although it looks like there's going to be multiple steps to do that because you would have to find E to A and then you'd have to use Pythagoras to get this line just here. And of course you'd still have to find one of the other lines. So to save some time, let's just start by working out one of those. So we're going to start by working out E to B. So to work out E to B, let's have a look at that triangle on the left, on the, well, on the right hand side of the prism. So if we draw that out, we've got a triangle. This angle here is 35, and we have a base length of 15. So to find the side opposite, that's going to be the opposite side, and this is going to be the adjacent side. So we're going to use our tan formula triangle. So TOA, of course you can just use the ratios if you prefer. And to work out the opposite, we're going to do a multiplication. So it's tan times the adjacent. So we're going to put tan 35 for the angle we're using. And we're going to multiply that by the adjacent side, which is 15. So tan 35 times 15. And we just need to type that into our calculator. So when we type that in, we get our answer, which is 10.503 
11307. And there we go, that's that line there done. Let's just label that on 10.50, and there's a few more numbers there. I'm just going to put those little dots just to remind myself to go back to the full number. So there's the first length. Now let's have a look at that length on the base. So for the length on the base, we've got this line just here. And if we draw a sketch of the base of the prism, and think about what that looks like. We've got a right angled triangle here from M to B to A. And we know that this is nine and this is 15. So to work out that length just here, we would just do Pythagoras. So we're getting the longest side, we're looking for the hypotenuse, so we need to do the square root of 9 squared add 15 squared. Or of course you can just do 9 squared add 15 squared and then square root your answer. But when I'm doing Pythagoras I like to save this step and just put it all under the square root straight away. So that gives me a length 17.4928. And there we go, that's the length on the bottom. So if we label that on the diagram, that is just here, 17.49, a couple of dots after there to remind myself. And we've pretty much gone and solved this problem. The original problem was basically just, how do we get two of the lengths in that triangle? Now, as we have now found that, we can definitely find the angle. So if I draw that right angle triangle that's in the middle of the prism, and we'll label what we're looking for. We're looking for x. We have the base, which is 17.49. We've got the height, which is 10.50, and obviously the rest of the decimals. So how am I gonna find that angle? Well, to find it, let's label it up again. So we have the opposite side, and we have the adjacent side. So we're gonna be using our tan triangle again, just down here. This time we're finding an angle. So when I'm finding an angle, I'm gonna press shift tan first, I'm gonna do the inverse of tan. So I do the inverse of tan, and I'm gonna put the opposite over the adjacent. So that's gonna be 10.50 and the rest of those numbers, which I'm gonna type in on my calculator, and on the bottom, 17.49 and the rest of those numbers. Now I probably don't need to put the full number in, but I do need to put a good few decimals in because I don't wanna get a rounding error. So just to be safe, I'm going to put them all in because it takes me an extra couple of seconds. 10.5031307 on the top and 17.4928568 on the bottom. Have a look back at your calculator and make sure that you've not typed in anything incorrectly because it's very easy to do. And I'm just having a look. I have actually typed something in incorrectly. I put two sevens on the numerator. So we want to delete that and put two ones in there. There we go, so now I have the correct numbers. I'm gonna press equals. So I've got my answer. That's come out as 30.9815, and there's a few more decimals. Now I'm not gonna write down the full one for that part because it does just say, give your answer correct to one decimal place. So I'm definitely gonna be able to give my answer and round it correctly now. So looking at what we've got there, we can currently have 30.98. Now, if we chop it after the first decimal, that 9 is actually going to round up because we've got an 8 after it. Now, if it, goes, if it is going to round up, then that's going to make the 30 become 31. So that's a bit strange because if we have 31, how do we write that to one decimal place? Well, that's fine. It just means that the first decimal is going to be a 0. So I put 31.0. So my final answer for this question is 31.0 degrees and there is the final answer to our question. So there we go, that is looking at 3D trigonometry. Now that included using Sokotoa for lengths, Sokotoa for angles, and also Pythagoras theorem. So I will link all the videos for that in the description. But hopefully you found that useful and helpful. If you did, don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.